Wow, that is the living room of the Mun residence. Wow, this is beautiful. Oh. Hi, Benno. It's great to have you <laughs> here. To see, see you Stefan. here. That's hey. Kenneth. Hi, Benno. Kenneth. So good to How see are you? you. Good Welcome to, to the Thomas Mann House. Thank you so much. I saw a photograph, an uh, original photograph of this window there, together with the piano, uh, with the Vaughn family in front. It was, everything was dark, dark, dark. So they did not really use the wonderful, nice light of California. It was a kind of hiding place somehow. But there is a piano there. And what I remember is that's the original piano of the Mann family there. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. Hmm. Mann bought the piano in the early 40s here in California. And it became such a central part of their social life here in the house uh, on some remote drive. For example, um, the philosopher Theodor Adorno, okay. who lived just a few blocks away on Cantor here in, in Brentwood. Uh, he came by often and uh, taught Thomas Mann some chords. He was the musical advisor on his uh, novel, Dr. Faustus. Well, could you show me the piano? That would be great, because of the piano has a special story. Yeah, yeah okay. it's right over here. <laughs> some of our fellows say that they sometimes hear the ghost of Thomas Mann play during the night. Oh, I was sure, because I heard that Thomas Mann did not play music. He would have records. And of course, he would write Dr. Faustus, but he would never ever play the piano himself. Even though he wasn't a big piano player himself, he had a lot of friends over who played for the yes. family, uh, right here where the piano is standing today. Mm. Um, and is it only the ghost of Thomas Mann that plays, <laughs> or do real people play the piano as well? Alive people? Real people do play the piano, oh, that's true. We okay. just recently had uh, the pianist uh, Igor Levitt inaugurating okay. the piano yes. when it came back to the house in 2000. In 21. We try not only to keep the piano alive, but also the salons and the, the sort of uh, community that, that played such an important role in this living room by hosting not only concerts, but also panel discussions on political mm. issues, um, uh, readings and, and, and other events here at the house. The core or heart of this house is a fellowship program. Yes. So mm -hmm. we yeah. encourage uh, German scholars and intellectuals and thinkers to apply for so-called fellowships to visit us here at the house in Los Angeles. They live here, they use this living room, and then they engage with uh, different, all sorts of people here in Los Angeles and other cities in North America. But by the way, we're always talking about Thomas Mann and the Thomas Mann house. He was living here by himself, not at all. He was living here with Katja Mann, born Pringsheim, right? And his family. So when you see pictures of Thomas Mann here, it's not just him. So we are always concentrating on him. I understand. But one thing here, I see the original record uh, from the Valkyrie, the Valkyrie was one of the favorite operas of Thomas Mann. And it's interesting, you all even find the ideas of the Valkyrie in one of his novels, by Summenblut. It's about an uh, adolescent, a uh, young boy, a young girl. They go to the opera house in, uh, Munich, and there's a performance of the Walküre. Bruno Walter. Bruno Walter was the conductor, and Bruno Walter would also perform the organ in the Villa Aurora, which is very nearby. The Walters were also close friends of the Manns. Sure, of course. Mm. They frequented our living room too, and uh, Bruno Walter used to play here on the piano. It really is incredible just how many German intellectuals and artists lived here during that time. And especially in this that's in this neighborhood. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. I learned that I was present at the inauguration of a very, very nice painting. Shall we see that? Of course, yeah. Okay, Let's go thank to the you. study. That's the future wife of Thomas Mann. Six or seven year old Katja Pringsheim. Hmm. Uh, a painting by uh, the painter Franz von Lehnbach. In her diaries, Katja Mann, born Pringsheim, she would write, I could never ever do in my life what I wanted to do. She was a very intellectual person. She studied three years mathematics. She mm -hmm. was very smart. And she gave up her academic ambitions just to marry Thomas Mann. Mm -hmm. Thank you so Thank much you. having us here. And I'm looking forward to the next events you're organizing here. And I'm looking forward to more objects of the Mann legacy to arrive here, because that's the right place Wonderful. for these things and also for the dialogue on democracy because we're living in difficult times now we do. and yeah. the more the Thomas Mann is important. 
Yeah, please stop by again soon. Oh. Of course, we'd love to. Yeah, and, uh, thank you so much, Benno. Thanks thank for you. visiting us. Benno, great. Bye, thank Stefan. you so much. Thank you, Katja. Bye bye. Bye, bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye Katja. <laughs> well, Mr. Schneider, thank you so much for showing me all these fantastic places. It's been a real pleasure seeing all of these wonderful places and meeting these people and seeing the connection they have to you it's and to Germany. Fun. It's yeah. great fun and it's a great German American experience. Yeah. <laughs>